when I realized it was becoming a problem when it became October, when I stopped moving the way I was moving. I would push 3,000 miles a week, 2,700 miles a week. But then all of a sudden, that had changed down to 1,000. 15, 17, barely 2,000 goddamn miles. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. You have failed me for the last time, Admiral. Captain Piet. My journey with CFI has come to an end. Today, we're looking at this female driver and the reason why she left CFI. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Let's get into this right here. He basically asked me, why did I leave CFI? I left CFI for multiple reasons. Don't get me wrong. I started at CFI as a uh, student driver. I would recommend that company to anybody that's getting out here starting as a company driver because CFI lets you do what you want to do. But I don't know how that is now since Heartland bought them out. I was in 19, 2022. I had a wonderful fleet manager, an awesome-ass fleet manager. I was getting my miles, everything. Everything was looking up for me. Uh, for the first year and a half, ran good. Money was good, even though it was a very low CPM. But that didn't matter to me because my fleet manager was good. And also, um, I got my miles. My hometown was legit. All all that stuff was 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 the right for me, Okay. And so, come August 19, 2022, when Harlan Express bought CFI out, when I realized it was becoming a problem when it became October, when I stopped moving the way I was moving, I would push 3,000 miles a week, 2,700 miles a week. But then all of a sudden, that had changed down to 1,000, 15, 17, barely 2,000 goddamn miles. I'm over here hitting up my fleet manager. I need you to pre plane me on me a load. You know what I'm saying? I kept had to bother her. And I never used to have to communicate with my fleet manager. We were so locked in, so tight to the point where she thought she can come text my phone and tell me about some corny ass jokes about other fucking drivers that didn't, that wasn't even funny. But that's besides the point. That was the type of connection that me and my fleet manager had. We was cool like that. When I say we was locked in, we was locked in. She made sure your girl was moving. But it ended up becoming out of her control. November came, Thanksgiving came. I stayed out on the road. CFI normally would pay you 2,500 miles guarantee if you ran or if you did not run at all. Heartland said no. Layover pay for Heartland went down for us to $56. What the fuck is that? And you didn't get that until after 48 hours. CFI would have never. So I knew right then and there it was really finna go to shit. So I told my dog that it came over to CFI with me. We got to get the fuck out. I got out first, but I came over to be a company. She got out second. Because she was sitting for three, four, five days straight. They didn't want to pay her. At first, she had a good relationship with her fleet manager. He was paying her all the fucking time. Now, this kind of remind me, and it, and it brought me back to when I was running for JNR Shrugal. When I got there, everything was good. Like I said, money was good. Miles was good. Home time was good. Fleet manager, even though he was an asshole, he was good. It was all good. And from that point, I've been stressing that if you have a good rapport with your fleet manager, your time with the company will be good. But unfortunately, yeah, when he left, time kind of got in the darkest miles was bad i was sitting too much getting crappy ass lows that would take me into places that my fleet manager prior knew that i didn't like to go and he would never send me there's two places in illinois in particular one of which that i thought that I was like legitimately banned from, but come to find out I was still getting sent to that place and I couldn't stand going there. Tried to get myself out of that situation with the new fleet manager, kinda didn't go the way that I wanted. Again, 
you know, if if you're good with your fleet manager and everything is good, you will continue to do good. But it's just unfortunate that when a company change or when the fleet manager leaves, it's like you had to start all over again. And in this particular situation with this young lady, you know, a company brought out her company and everything seems to go to shit. And it's just unfortunate that kind of what happens when companies buy out companies. And I seen that, I, I seen it happen. I, I seen it with JNR Swoogle when they acquired uh, Super Service. The drivers over at Super Service, they, the miles that they was getting at the time kind of went down the tubes and they was over here debating on whether or not if they could stay, if they can go, could they get used to the new program? Could they get used to the new amount that they was getting? Can they get used to the, to the, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the layover pay, the detention pay. It was a lot to take in and a lot to get used to, which a lot of the guys couldn't. And it's just unfortunate that they had to, you know, bounce up out of there. Just like this young lady right here, more power to her. That was the reason why she left CSI or CFI. And what was your reason if you guys worked it for CFI? If you work for CFI, let us know in the comments below what happened after Heartland took over. Thinking of a master plan. This ain't nothing but sweat inside my hand. So I dig into my pocket, all my money spent. Dig deeper, still coming up with lens. So I start my mission, leave my residence. Thinking how could I get some dead presidents? I need money. I used to be a stick up kid. So I think of all the devious things I did. Used to roll up, this is a hold up. Nothing funny, stop smiling. You still